Hello and welcome to the Lacuna Festivals and our event today is a panel discussion um, and we have Alan, Rachel, three members of AHA Collective and Ian here today. Um, I'm going to hand over immediately to the host uh, for today's session which is Alan. Yeah, thank you Sarah. Good. Good, good evening everyone, um, welcome along to our discussion event. Um, how was for you creativity during lockdown? And I'd just like to thank you very much to Lacuna Festivals for uh, the third year of the festival for organising. Um, it's a fantastic festival, it's very um, run in the spirit of uh, democracy with over 300 artists taking part, so it's all about opportunity. So it's fantastic to be a part of it and I'm glad that I'm joined by um, our panel members this evening to have a, a discussion. Um, so I'll just uh, share my screen uh, so that we can have a look at the format, what we're going to be doing this evening. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that on your screen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to give me a thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we are going to do this in, in three parts. The first part we're going to introduce the artists who are taking part this evening in our discussion. Um, the second part we, uh, the, the, sorry, the first part we are also going to view each of the films, uh, video work that the artists have in the show. So we'll be watching four films. So make yourself comfortable because we're going to have a movie night. Um, then what we're going to do, we're going to have a, like a little session just to allow the artists, maybe if they want to say anything or, or discuss about you know the film that we've just watched, their video work, um, so that we can uh, you know um, talk about it. Um, the second part, we are going to have uh, an actual discussion on creativity during lockdown. Um, there will be several areas. It will be quite um, free-flowing um, and we're just going to discuss um, things that have, you know, we've experienced, you know, how lockdown was, creativity, um, how we felt about it, how we dealt with it and what we're looking to do in the future. Um, and the, the final part is hopefully we have a, a general discussion if there's any Q&A, um, any questions asked or if any of the audience members want to join in and have a, a general discussion, uh, we'll be happy, happy to do that and allocate some time at the end of the event. So that, that's our format for this evening. Um, what I would like to do is I'd like to just... Um, I wrote like a few some notes just to um, maybe set the context and introduce the the event um, for everyone. Um, so I've written some notes, so I'd like to just um, read them out um, just to give some you know um, just to give some context. Some uh, it's it's like a, a broad framework of time, sixteen months. So I've tried to um, try and summarize it up okay so i'll i'll just um, read that read that out just now so um okay here we go we only see what we know said johann wolfgang von goethe however in 2020 we got to see a world that we didn't know a world that suddenly appeared to be stripped of all its capitalist spectacle Guy de Boer stated in the society of the spectacle that in a world which really is topsy-turvy, the true is a moment of the false, and it seemed that we have been able to glimpse an inversion of this maxim. The political economy and symbolic exchange value of the sign was challenged, with its meaning no longer making any sense. However, companies were quick to adopt the people's mantra of, we are in this together. I was familiar with this phrase first hearing it, in the lyrics of the post-punk outfit band New Model Army's 1989 song Vagabonds. We are old, we are young, we are in this together, vagabonds and children, prisoners forever. 
However, in this context and the context that I've always imagined it having a relevancy was that of the poor and the less well-off who were in it together and knowing the best way ahead was to stick together. Which brings to mind an 1849 painting by the French painter Gustave Kirby titled The Stonebreakers, a work of social realism depicting two peasants, a young man and a young and his father breaking rocks. The young man hands his father a new tray of rocks to break and we imagine that at some point in his life the young man will take over from his father. But now the phrase was being dragged out and applied across all classes of people and social divides. With this new shift to pandemic advertising, each company was keen to adapt marketing and advertising to address and reflect this unique situation. The rads began falling into distinct categories such as we are doing something, we thought you should know, and we are here for you, with most containing the phrase, we are in this together. We are the unfortunate generation that can therefore lay claim to being in it together and having lived through a global pandemic. The borders between countries closed, shops abruptly shut, and hospitality ceased operating. Apart from essential trips to the supermarket, we were all largely confined to our homes. In the UK and Europe, however, we now seem to be in a somewhat emergent state of ex exiting the pandemic. Well, sadly, countries in Latin America are still in its midst. Over the past 16 months, we have experienced a vast amount of change, uncertainty and emotions. Are we now at the end of the dizzying array of rules that were changing almost weekly? The French poet Apollinaire said that now and then it's good to pause in pursuit of happiness and just be happy. The beginning of the pandemic did indeed feel like a resetting event where we could pause and take in our surroundings. It seemed as if the world was experiencing a true resetting event. It is without doubt difficult to sum up the last 16 months since March 2020 in a succinct and concise manner, and it is certainly not the aim of this discussion to provide one. I recently spoke to someone whom I hadn't seen since the beginning of the pandemic and found I was unable to describe what we'd just been through and how I felt. His reply was, don't worry, we've all been through the same thing. We might hope then to be able to unpack some of what we have been through and how this has impacted on our creative practices. In the broader field, this peacetime challenge to normality is unprecedented and art fairs and galleries were cancelled and moved online. Many questions came to mind such as, how does an art, line, an art show that's online compare to an in real life show? Are we ready to return back to normality or have we perhaps become more com comfortable with our own company? Perhaps to the extent we would fulfil the opinion of Oscar Wilde when he said that other people are quite dreadful. The only possible society is oneself. It would appear that creativity was a light at the end of the tunnel during lockdown, with many people turning to the arts and crafts and becoming makers. Many found inspiration through TV shows such as Grayson's Arts Club on Channel 4. The many themes during the programmes allowed people to think about their lives and their surroundings and participate in the pausing of the world. Creativity was being used as an optical lens to both view and deal with the trauma of the pandemic. However, most of the output was positive art and not abject art, such as that was made by McCarthy, Pettibone or Kelly, as one might have imagined. This coming Monday on the 19th of July 2021, the UK government and devolved governments will lift the easing of lockdown and reduce it to level zero. This for many will signal an end to the pandemic, at least in the UK. However, the future is still far from certain. So it seems somewhat fitting to have this discussion, even if it may serve the purpose of catharsis and healing as to how it has been for us. So thank you very much for listening to my notes that I've written and tried to summarise up the last 16 months just to provide a, a starting point for the, the context. 
of this discussion. And now what I'd like to do, I'd like to introduce our artist that we have this evening. And I'm going to introduce in alphabetical order by the first name. So the, our first um, participant is the AHA Collective. If AHA Collective would just like to give us a wave. <laughs> okay, this is our AHA Collective. And okay, so this is uh, the biography for our AHA Collective. We, Heidi Bergstrom, based in British Columbia in Canada, and a good child based in Devon in the UK, and Annie Rapstoff, based in Oxfordshire in the UK, are a AHA Collective. We came together on an online residency, Proyecto ACE, in early 2021, and named ourselves AHA Collective, as the A, H and A stands for our first names. We are interdisciplinary artists who are interested in painting, film, making, text, photography, and live art. We work in collaboration and share our skills, skills ideas, ideas, and concepts. Our video project submitted to Lacuna explores the significance of the distances between us and how we relate to our different bodies of water, an ocean, a lake, and a river. It was started during our online residency and developed from there. People can find out more about us from our Instagram account, via email, and on YouTube. Okay, thank you, AHA Collective. Lovely to have you here. And our next artist is myself, Alan Rutherford, and I'm also acting as the, the chair and host for this evening. <coughs> okay, so I will uh, read out my biography. I'm a visual artist based in Glasgow, Scotland, and I graduated from the Glasgow School of Art Sculpture Department in 1999. I received my MA from the Open College of the Arts in 2019. I'm an artist member of the Glasgow Sculpture Studios and also the International Sculpture Centre. I would describe myself as an interdisciplinary artist. working across various media. Archival research of local histories and site visits have informed my art practice that includes site-specific installations and video works. The work usually evolves through a process of visiting a place and allowing it to reveal its history as well as the current reality of the place and its people. Usually there are ideological power relations between the past and the present and power struggles between the past built environment, such as monuments and installations, and the current attitudes towards them, all of which have been explored in my works. I'm currently working with some visual artists in China in partnership with the Ruan Yisan Heritage Foundation to collaborate through its Art and Heritage Project, which invites artists to work at ancient and historic towns in the Fujian prov province. Initial funding for this was received through the British Council's Connection Through Culture Programme. And our next artist, is Ian. If you can just put your hand up, Ian, give us a wave. Hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. Ian, Ian Vishorek. Ian Vishorek is a visual artist working in painting, video, and installation. Since 2003, he has exhibited widely both in Ireland, including EVA International 2018, RHA annual exhibitions from 2013 to 2020, RUA Royal Ulster Academy annual exhibition 2020, and CCA RDS Collective Contemporary Art 2010. And internationally with participation in group curated shows in Northern Ireland, Germany, France, Portugal, Sweden, Austria, Switzerland, USA and China. And also solo exhibitions, 15 to date, in Ireland, Northern Ireland, UK and Czech Republic. He has also carried out public artworks in Ireland and France. He's also devised and curated a number of shows in Ireland and has undertaken residencies in Ireland, UK, France and Austria. Much of Vitrek works in influence of digital technology in locating social and cultural identity and the interconnectedness that underpins our everyday existence. A major strand has involved the making of paintings of low-res images harvested from the internet. For example, the Crossing series, 
exploring the phenomena of borders. And one day, 40 sunrises, comprising paintings of sunrise around the world on a single day captured via live webcams online. Our final artist this evening is Rachel McManus. Can you give us a wave, Rachel? Hi, Rachel. Okay, Rachel McManus is a visual artist based in County Clare, Ireland. Rachel has a BA in Visual Communications from National College of Art and Design, Dublin, and an MA in Fine Art from the Open College of the Arts, UK. Rachel has exhibited nationally and internationally, including at 126 Artist Run Gallery, Galway, PS2 Studio, Belfast, and Die Kunstschaften Den Gallery, Linz, Austria. Pandemic era online shows include RAW exhibition by Beyond Live and Reveal, vanishing with this gallery. Her practice is two areas of focus drawing and performance art. Her drawing practice focuses at present on community-based collaborative projects and an ongoing exploration into her environment and social nuances of her surroundings. A performative practice addresses themes around endurance, repetition and physicality. Previously to 2016, Rachel worked in the fitness industry as a personal trainer, fitness instructor and instructor trainer and gym manager. This period continues to inform her current performative practice heavily. Rachel says, I use the skills that I accumulated during my time as a fitness instructor continue to continue to use the body as a tool to produce, but with a contextuality, contextually different goal. Rachel is currently developing a site-specific set of outdoor durational performance works and co-producing a multimedia art installation for a domestic abuse centre. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is our artist introduced, and I do apologise for not progressing the, the screen sharing, the slides here. Um, so that's Rachel, Rachel's biography, and it's really fantastic to have everyone here this evening. So a warm welcome to you all. Okay, so I think what we shall do now, we shall go straight into watching the, the films by each of the artists and collective. And what we're going to do, we're going to start off with AHA Collective. And I'm going to run the film. Hopefully I should be able to do this from here. If we can uh, give some feedback that we can see the YouTube screen here. Yep. You'll have Can to you share your screen? screen again, Alan, because it only works on the active window that you were on when you shared. Ah, okay. Okay, dokie, gotcha. Right, let's find where we are here. Should be there. Okay, doke. That's the one. Right. <coughs> I don't think I play hear the audio. Yeah, there's no audio. Okay, though, let's try again. <laughs> it's always the, the nervous bit when you have to share your um share the screen and uh you know deal with ah share sound. But it's the tick box gotcha. Okay. Let's try again. Do apologize. Uh can you ask me for some kind of Can we hear anything? Yep. Okay, yep. fantastic. Okay, let's just rewind that back to the start. And this is Littoral Zones, the Frontiers Between by AHA Collective, UK and Canada a work produced in 2021.
Okay, so welcome back into the room, folks. Um, now, I, I think that it might be actually work better if we can actually maybe discuss the film a, a, after watching it rather than we can either discuss it after watching it or we can watch, you know, the four works and then have a general discussion afterwards. Makes sense. Makes sense, actually, because then your memory is a little bit fresher. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so. Sorry, I'm kind of hearing some other some other kind of audio creeping in from somewhere. Is that from my? Uh, <laughs> don't know where, where that came from. Sorry. I think yeah. it's Sarah Jane, isn't it? Uh, Sarah's on mute. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it must be. Is it my screen? I say it's gone to the next video, has it? And it's started playing the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's Watch Virgin Galactic Richard Branson to space. I don't know where that's came from. Um, yeah. So, so would you like to have a quick discussion on the on the work, the film that we've just watched? Uh, that probably might work better. Uh, you know, while our ideas are uh, fresh. So, I think it's uh, there's actually a lot happening behind. You know the behind the actual video of of your work, Aha Collective. Um, do you maybe like to talk through a little about it and give some insight, maybe on the work uh, for the the viewers, the audience? Someone would like to. Okay. You know, to so the starting yeah. point. Uh, did, I pronounce, did, did I pronounce? Did I pronounce? Did I pronounce your online residency right? Um, Proyecto Asi. Yeah. Yeah. Proyecto yeah. is Okay, so you, met, you, met together, you met together for the first time online in early 2021. So you actually came together, you know, during, you know, the, the pandemic. Mm. Um, when we had to, a lot of people had to shift the focus online and actually, you know, think about how to work online. We so, wouldn't have met if it, if it hadn't been for the pandemic because it's usually a, um, a physical residency. So you go to Argentina yeah. um, and we, we didn't do that. <laughs> we just went there virtually. They were, what, okay, so, so, so they changed it, they restructured it so that the residency was you know, digital and um, yeah. Yeah. A, a, actually online. So um, how long did it last for? How long? Four weeks. Uh, how long was it? Four weeks, okay. Mm. Um, so can you, can you explain a little about your work? Um, what, what kind of, you know, what ideas you, you, you um, cause you kind of, you know, obviously the, the theme of the show is distance and you know, your work, you know, your film has elements of distance in it, but if you'd like to explain, you know, a little about the, the distance. Uh, yeah, we, in, in the film. We, we started with the idea that what separates connects. Okay, so that's a sort of a, a, a paradox, really. And we've got a lot of water that separates us. Um, but by the same token, the water connects us. So we started exploring that water. And because it had different forms between an ocean, a river and a lake, um, it, it just so happened we were very fortunate that we, we were near those different bodies of water and we could... Um, show how we each interacted with our own bodies of water and and, and synchronize them at the same time so in fact we were very intentional about knowing when each other was going out to the various bodies of water and we were doing our filming and our recording mm -hmm. uh, as much as possible synchronizing on the same day if not the same hour or whatever what have you and the other thing is of course during the pandemic is we were able to get out right? Like here we are in lockdown. We were all in our separate lockdowns, but we use this opportunity to actually get out in our environment and engage. So that was, that was yeah, a big piece yeah. too, was synchronizing and just getting out there and then sharing our thoughts and keeping holding space. I think Annie, you talked quite a bit about this during the time was that we were holding space for each other whilst we were undertaking these activities outdoors. Yeah, so, you know, every time we were sort of walking or going to where we were, 
um, we would sort of hold each other in mind. So, you know, to try and sort of work with interconnection, really. And, um, um, yeah, I think yeah. that's really important. Yeah, because I think when you, when you made, when, was it February, March then, you, you kind of made this work, was it? Yes, yes. I think those, those were some of the, you know, the darkest days of the pandemic, to be honest. So yes. I think it's, you know, to get online and actually, you know, actually discuss with, you know, other artists and think creatively and, you know, just talk about ideas and actually communicate and, as you say, hold, eventually do things and feel like, you know, you know, you are working even though you're like, completely disconnected. Yes. Um, and you're kind of just just meeting on, online. Um, I think it's uh, it's it's been it's been a very good um, outcome um, achieved in terms of uh, in terms of working. And I think it's a, uh, I mean, a work that's kind of made like that within that that time is like a it's like a fantastic snapshot, you know, of that kind of time. Um, time period, you know, of the Annie, the Annie said last time that although we haven't met one another physically, we feel yeah. as though we have, you know, we feel as though we've been in the same physical place together, but we haven't, you know, we can't have done. And we, we were put together randomly as well, Alan. So during the, during the residency, we had our individual works that we were doing and sharing with this group of, and there was like 40 of us all together online. And then at one point, the, um, you know, the organizers, the leaders, they broke us up into random groups to do a, a sort of a group activity together. And so we were put together as a group and we just flowed. Things just flowed very nicely. Actually, we um, found a lot of uh, intersections right away and had a lot of sort of empathy between us. So, you know, that allowed us to get quickly into a creative groove and, and figure out what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go and what our interests yeah. were. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's not, it's certainly not easy collaborating. Collaboration is difficult. Um, yeah, at the best of times, just, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. yeah yes. definitely. But especially if you, if you fit together and you can actually make it work. Um, yeah, and our practice is very different, Alan. You know, my yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mainly performance based. Um, Anna, I guess your practice is, is probably m more photographic. And um, Heidi, I guess you, you'd say you're an interdisciplinary artist, wouldn't you, really? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, we, we just, um, it well, just, we yeah. just kept in mind this idea of water and flow and connection. And, and that really bound us together, you know. and it, and it so helped, as you said, during the pandemic, to be actively making work, not just sitting in a screen, just talking to each other, but actively mm -hmm. going out. I think that really made the difference. And the fact that we, we kept in touch via Zoom, yes. if not on a weekly, on a bi-weekly basis. Bi-weekly, yeah. 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 I think for me, one of, one of, the, things, one of the things that I certainly felt um, during the pandemic was all, you know, a lot of people always really became aware of their surroundings um, because, you know, they were, they were there, you couldn't go anywhere. So it was like, you know, you, you kind of became aware of like, let me go walking, what's near, but what's over those hills, you know, where can I go, what can I see? And it, it, it kind of, I think it was a bit like, a, you know, a renaissance for people, a reawakening of um, actually of discovery, just like the, the you know, simplicity of, um, of actually like going back to nature and actually, you know, engaging with, you know, local, uh, your locality. Um, yeah, and slowing just, down. <laughs> and slowing down what we're doing. Helps. Yeah, the slowing down, the, 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 the pausing, you know, when mm. the, the resetting, it almost... Uh, yeah, it was it was it was quite um, quite incredible, and it's I think um, you know I think it uh, you know I mean I, I think for probably like a lot of people it, it kind of it was quite bewildering you know all of a sudden it's like well, what am I going to do crikey you know, um, how do I respond to this you know how do I make the most of it and then you know people, people approached it in different ways you know quite simply um, everybody you know had their own ideas and that's, that's kind of what we're trying to tease out and discuss this evening, you know, the different, the different um, 
the different approaches. So but you guys, you guys obviously, um, you know, are interested in technology as well, which... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, most of it was done on, on phones and Heidi is the, you know, the tech genius who mainly put the work together, but we, <laughs> we, we talked through it a lot and, you know, yeah, sort of collaborated on what, how we envisaged the piece to, to look, you know. Yeah, and using things like Google Earth and Anna jumped up to immediately grasp hold of Google Earth to sort of do that early animation and later versions we sort of anticipated being able to create a Google Earth that goes all the way from, from Matheson Lake through Peyton Harbor and to Little Wickenheim and well, we haven't got to do that yet because it's been too difficult. But um, and then also Annie introduced us to What Three Words, which is a very fascinating app. We talked all about it during our artist talk about yeah. the technologies oh, that yeah. we used. And Anna also used a microscope lens on her phone to do those beautiful details, which we used as our chapter dividers um, for our, each of the titles and stuff. So, yeah, we've done a lot. And then I actually um, did that we both did, Annie and I both did poetry, so Annie's poetry was at the end for the gathering part, and mine was at the opening part about literal zones. Yeah, and there is a whole yeah, bunch of art theory yeah. around li literal art as well, if anybody's interested in following it up. Bruce Barber, who's a, a very well-known art historian and um, contemporary art teacher at Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, has done a lot of work on literal art and um, community activated based art that type of thing so it's absolutely sort of, fascinating yeah it's fascinating and it opens a new a new window to a new world right yeah. the literal zone the the actual definition of a literal zone is the edge mm -hmm. where the water meets the land and it's this fluxing flowing space that continually changes you can't hold it for any fraction of a moment it just continually changes so it's yeah. a metaphor it, for other yeah. experiences. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah, it's, anyway. it's very fa fascinating. Um, I think we could have a whole discussion. Um, yeah, we got to move you know, on. <laughs> lit 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 literal zones. Um, and for, 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 for anyone who's actually, you know, viewing this video later on, if you search in YouTube for AHA Collective, you should be able to find the talk that was last Saturday evening. It's now on YouTube and it is very, very fascinating. It shows how you can use everyday tech um, within, you know, creatively and uh, get something really interesting from it. Thank um, you. Okay, thank you guys. We shall uh, move on and watch the next video, which is, is by myself. Um, if I can... Uh, find is this one of your collaborations or just yours? Um, this this is not a collaboration. This is just um, this is something that uh, something that um, okay. This is I'll um, uh, um, to introduce it. I I worked on this um, last um, last September, and again, it was like a real um, a real snapshot within within the pandemic. Uh, that's what I'll say at the moment. And I shall share the screen. We shall watch it first. Um, keep with the, the same kind of format. Um, okay. Uh, share screen. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, so this is um called two one zero.
Okay, uh, some nice mesmerizing noises of the motion of the ocean. Mm. Uh, very, uh, very, uh, very relaxing and meditating. Uh, yeah, so that that was um, that was a work that I made. Um, it was last last August, and I had um, I had the idea in my head, and it, the idea was getting bigger and bigger. And I had um, you know like an idea for doing it on a nice beach as a performance with you know like proper almost like actors doing it and um and I, I kind of went to cyprus the cyprus college of art um, and i had i had to kind of realize this work i just took the opportunity um to make it to do it and it is what it is and, and it's a snapshot of something that was made um within within you know the the, the time of the, the pandemic um the, the idea behind it was that um, I was really, you know, interested in, you know, the idea of, um, you know, we were going back to um, the idea of nostalgia and looking back and going somewhere in the present makes us was, makes us feel better um, because we don't want to really deal with the present and then it doesn't matter where you go as long as it's somewhere somewhere in, in the past. Um, and one of the, one of the things that I've always been interested in is is a uh, is the past is always here in the, the environment and it's like the you know the uh, the ancient kind of Celtic sort of symbols um, and the, like the, this kind of rebirth of you know this this kind of language this um, re reawakening um, and it struck me that they were quite similar to you know the when this kind of idea of like zonal markings, you know, two meters, one meters, it was like the circle of life. It's kind of meant, meant, meant to represent the circle of life, where um, it's like birth out to you know death. So, so the the, the people that helped me out to make the performance were um, final year students from Central St Martin's College who just graduated this this summer. Um, <laughs> I wasn't actually in it. I conceived it and I directed it. Um, so that that was the performance that I made, and that that's the work. Um, I think that you know, a lot of work that probably was made during the pandemic. Um, like I say, I think a lot of it is like a good snapshot of you know um, the resources and the facilities, and you know just the opportunity just to uh, just to make the work. So. So that that was my uh, that was my work and, uh, that I made um, last summer. Um, uh, so they were able to be physically distanced, actually, on the beach, right? While they were doing their like, each person was physically distanced as well. So you were yeah, doing it during yeah. the pandemic, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we'd all everyone um, had like had a recent. And COVID test, so um, you know, so there wasn't like um, choreographed so that everyone was apart. It was just like uh, no, it just you know, happened was, that way, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it happened that way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It would have been, you know, it's, it's. I think, uh, I think, you know, um, you know, you you can kind of like, you know, um, overdevelop something or overthink it, uh, but when you get opportunity to make it it's, you know it's just a, a good opportunity to get it out there and actually you know see how it looks and uh, how it works and um, and, and that, that was the work that I made so so for me it was it was also connected with I did I was doing like a um, like a series of drawings you know that were almost um, exploring you know the the past you know the reawakening of the past and you know people um, becoming interested in you know what, what what they had locally, their locality. Um, but also, you know the, the the fact that you know the the future, what what the future is going to be, and when it comes back, it's you know is it going to be different, you know, from the present. So I, I was kind of exploring ideas of uh, you know this um, these kind of like uh, you know places where people can go and with their minds and just to kind of you know escape things and. Uh, and also the, you know, the marking out, you know, these distances, um, I think it was really significant. Um, 
Okay, so and if anyone else um, got any I just want to ask Alan questions and like yeah. Oh am I on mute? No. No, no I can hear you. Yeah. See the, it it looked like one person one person's action they would draw a semicircle which would trigger the next person to start moving or did I take that up wrongly? No, that's correct. That's so yeah, that was interesting. Was there, yeah. was there a reason for that, yeah. or that had you had you? What was the purpose behind you having them do that? I think it was. I think it was the, the continuity of movement of flow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where it was almost like this. You know, to create a dynamic of a uh, movement. You know, where this the almost like maybe the energy and the the tra transfer to the next. Mm. You know, person, and then you know, so. It's almost like a visual thing, you know, where you're you're actually, you know, creating this uh, movement, mm -hmm. you know, around the actual mm -hmm. circle. It made um, it into a kind of was, a was that, dance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there was mm -hmm. there was lots of there was so many you know options available for this work, um, so many directions, um, and I, I possibly, you know, uh, would like to remake it, you know, with a nice speech because. It's not. It wasn't the best um, surface, but I think it was like a snapshot in time, and it was made um, with you know uh, what what what's available and what what you could do. And I, I liked I, I liked the idea of um, you know just um, yeah. There's, there's there's like a lot of chore choreography that you could um, that you could you know um, involve with the actual working out. You know, like the. The synergy, you know, of the of the the performers in terms yeah. of you know, the there's almost a sort of a, um, a a sense of transmissibility as well because if one person instigates the next, it's it, it, it's sort of like a it, it's like a weird kind of transmission, and and we were all very yeah. conscious of the idea. We're of very conscious of that. Yes. Yeah. So I was I, thinking that too, Ian. I thought they're like they're almost like they're in their own bubbles. And uh, yeah. and that exactly we're triggering each other to to move on. And Alan, you said something about nostalgia at the very beginning, and I was thinking that with that tide coming in, I mean, eventually the circles would all be destroyed and taken away back into the sea at different times because waves are different shapes, you know, and the tide doesn't come in equally across any beach. And um, I thought that was very poetic. Actually, yeah, we're always looking for that in our project yeah. too. Mm. Poetics. I, I was I was expecting it all to vanish, um, mm -hmm. and your, your your idea of um, past and future is interesting because um, the Chinese put the past in front of them. I'm sure you know that because they can see the past, and they put the future behind them because they have no idea what it holds and and what it is so i i, I thought that was an interesting um yeah. movement back and you know the front and the back and the the half uh, uh, and I, I kept thinking you know are they going to be wiped out um so i, I was drawn in by the um, by the waves coming and i'm not quite sure what um how how high your tides are down there because here they're they're five meters, but um... yeah, I think I think they, they probably would would have, they, yeah they would have disappeared, yeah, um, and it would have and it you know it would have become like a more a, probably a time based work as well. Mm. Um, I know that Ra Rachel's been doing work lately um, to do with the incoming tide, um, which you can maybe talk about later, which is really fascinating. But I think there's there's and then. Um, Simon, also um, the co-curator of um, uh, the festival, um, Distance, also makes a lot of work on the beach. So it, it's, it's just like a ready available, you know, space, you know, to actually... Theatre. You know, like yeah, a theatre, that's, a, that's mm. a fantastic word. Yeah, it's like a, like a big theatre where you can, you can stage anything, really. Um, mm all kinds of things but yeah there's so much potential and I think the Chinese are just so so wise about you know everything and um, that's uh, that's something that I'll have to ask uh, my Chinese artists mm. 
friends when when we meet next about the past and the future and mm. uh, it's kind of interesting because it's that is almost like you know when i said at the beginning you know the, the idea of the, the world is topsy-turvy and you know sometimes to see it correctly you have to stand on your hands and kind of view it upside down it's like it's almost like you know the chinese are actually doing that, doing that you know um yeah that's that's brilliant that's that's um that's fantastic uh yeah thank you very much um so i think we'll uh, move on to ian um ian's film uh which is 40 40 sunrises. One day, 40 sunrises. One day, 40 sunrises. I do apologise. Yep. Yeah, we're um, not worried. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's go back to here and click on there. I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> um, I think the thing is I've, you know, there's so many different platforms you end up using and I've been using Teams a heck of a lot in a not as much as I've been using Zoom, so it's... Uh... You're enjoying it too much, Alan. <laughs> no, this is, uh, this is slightly, slightly um, nervous, um, being the, the operator in control of the, Game the show. Game brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, okay, need so... To, this to is, um, it, I think. Yes, yes. Um, would you like to do a quick uh, introduction, Ian? Oh, no. oh, I mean, the truth, quick. yes, I'd be happy to. Um, I, know, I know that you, I know that you narrate it through it, but there, there's actually there's the, the the sound of my voice going all the way through it. But basically, um, I've been interested in in the internet and how we kind of relate to it. Um, I've been following work based on that sort of idea for a few years now, and um, somehow the idea of I don't know. I I found I found um, I found lockdown quite difficult at the beginning, and I, it was only when I managed to secure myself a, a, an arts council grant that it kind of fired me to do something. And I had this idea, and it was basically to follow um, sunrise around the world on a single day, um, on using on uh, streamed live webcams. So basically, I spent the whole day dotting between. Um, sunrises and um, screen grabbing them and then I made paintings from them because that's one of my main kind of uh, practice forms and um, so it, it was this idea of, of, of again I, and I think you know a lot of what's been talked about has that idea of liminality literal zones we've got you know temporality and, 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 and the temp temporary nature of stuff um, and the transient nature, and the sunrise is a very transient thing. It's it's there and then it's gone. So uh, I, I just I like that, and also sunrise. Everyone thinks of as an optimistic thing, but it also gives us that idea of of connection. And even though we can't go anywhere, we can still watch sunrises happening anywhere. These these uh, no more than I mean I was listening to the aha conversation, and I checked out Google Earth today for the very first time, and I was knocked over by it. But yeah. the amount of technology and and facilitation for us to find stuff and, and, and get inspired by it is massive out there. Um, and for me, this this thing of the webcams was something that I'd started sort of researching. And they, they really are kind of a, a, a remarkable resource. Um, so this this was sort of, I suppose, my, my first um, my first go at it. And, and I picked 40, uh, the, the idea being that they'd, they'd be as, as, as disparately spread through the world as possible. So from Canada down to uh, Tierra del Fuego, from, you know, all the way across Japan to everywhere. Um, and it, it, it was just, yeah, and I picked 40 um, because it's, uh, it's, it, it's quite unto Johnny. 40 days, which is what the, where quarantine comes from. Um, back in oh, Venice, yeah. when um, plague ships or, or potential plague ships, they, they had to stay in the harbour for 40 days before anyone could disembark. So it's just a, a kind of a little nod towards when this thing was made. And interestingly, the day that I did this on was 15th of July last year. Oh, wow. That's where I actually got all my source <laughs> material. And then, I, and then I spent till Christmas making my 40 little five by seven inch paintings and um, 
the okay. stipulation. Hold, hold, those com- hold those comments and we'll watch it and then we'll come back and we'll get the yeah. second part of, of all the Perfect. information. So one That's day for frame, some, That frames it anyway, I think, in some way. Okay, here we go. Sunrise is a phenomenon we're all familiar with. Regardless of geographic location or setting, it is an event that is infused with optimism and the possibility of new beginning. In the face of natural majesty, the sublime, it can also serve as a reminder of our own fragility. Live webcams linked directly to the internet have become increasingly available to access online. It's now possible for the viewer to be remotely present in many locations around the world. We can watch beaches at holiday destinations, take in cityscapes, or observe traffic, weather conditions, or even volcanic activity throughout the day and night, unscripted and experienced in real time. We can be there, travel the world through the screen of our laptop, tablet, or mobile phone. Particularly in this time of COVID, it might be regarded as a rather poignant freedom. While we can access these webcams and their streamed output, we have no control over their positioning or viewpoint, or the quality or technical nature of the equipment used. The viewer is not in control, other than to choose which webcam to access. Based on this freely available online opportunity, One Day 40 Sunrises presents the experience of sunrise on a particular day in various locations throughout the world, as experienced live through these webcams. The locations were chosen to reflect as broad a geographical spread as possible. The paintings are based on real-time screenshots grabbed from online streaming, harvested from the internet on a randomly selected day the 15th of July 2020, tracking sunrise around the globe. The result is a record of this transient experience over the course of one day. Paintings of digitally mediated images rendered in the traditional medium of oil on canvas. It celebrates the possibility of shared experience and reminds us that wherever we are in the world, we are all connected. You can cut it now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Where are we? Uh, Yeah, myself and uh, myself and Ian had a had a a good um, discussion. Um, I actually interviewed Ian about about his show um, back in back in February um, because. I, I thought I thought there was the concept was um, very unique in terms of uh, simple but also unique in terms of uh, you know where we can you know the fact that we're rooted well you know we can't move we can't go anywhere but you know somehow we can escape we can fly off we can fly off digitally. Um, you know, down the wires, and we can we can visit these places and experience them. You know, it kind of just raises so many questions. You know how, you know how we experience them, and what kind of experience we're actually looking for or getting from them. Um, so it's a it's a very a very rich work, and it does it also builds um, quite cohesively on on Ian's, um body of work um, 
Zovra in terms of what he's done in the, the past, in terms of exploring, you know, these um, these what Hito Sterl describes as the poor image, um, where it, these images turn up on the internet. They can be like low resolution GIFs and JPEGs, um, and they're often ignored. They're often been cropped. They're, they're, they're often um, they're often they um, turn up in search engines and they're anonymous, they're ambiguous, mm -hmm. and quite often, you know, they contain like important information and it's how we, you know, how we experience this. So, you know, I think in, in terms of, you know, we experienced the pandemic digitally, everything went, you know, well went online and uh, we were all, you know, looking to somehow um, simulate um, create like some kind of simulacra of actual real life itself. Um, so all, all these ideas were were encapsulated in, in Ian's project, um, and now that they are like quite um, diminutive um, oil painting works, um, the size of them. Um, so the, it is almost like you know maybe I, I would imagine seeing them in real life, like actually looking at you know small kind of mm. screens, you know like. Um, you know, TAT monitors or something. Um, so yeah, I was actually I was just to say uh, that I was, yeah. I was I was trying to um, not make the paintings themselves important. I, it's like I, I always think with these things, the more than uh, with literal zones and and also with your own and and also with Rachel's, which we haven't seen yet, is a pretty piece of work. You know, it's it's that idea of of the the the, the idea is the thing that really carries and, and then it's just a case of kind of iterating the idea I, I think I think there's a sort of um, you, you don't want to over over egg the cake in that sense it, you, you, it, it, it's great because the, if the idea is pure and good and eloquent and it sets people thinking that's all I think that's all really that, that well for me it's what's important mm -hmm. and as I say looking at the work of aha and also your own and Rachel's. I think I think there's that element of that in there that it's like, you know, don't kill it by naming it. Just just sort of make the be. thing and, and let it be. Exactly right. Let it be and, and trust it. Trust in your idea without feeling you have to justify it or defend it. Well and I, I love Ian the fact that in the creation of your paintings and I and I felt this really strongly seeing that through there. I could feel the webcam itself. And I felt like you were not trying to make those paintings or those images more than what they are. No. And I love that. I love that because so many people make the mistake of, you know, um, painting from a photograph, for example, and they repeat the, the errors of the photograph or they add a conceit to it that's just not there or something like that. And, and I just felt like there was a, they felt very authentic. So thank you. I still felt the presence of the webcam, which is the real thing in, in essence. Great. Thank right? you very much. It's ironic. Yeah. yeah. From the painting perspective. So thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, I, I felt that you um, depicted this on the, the, the painting was very honest. I think I, I second um, Heidi. Yeah. But there's they're very honest and um, but they're also um they're quite beautiful whether that's intentional i don't mm -hmm. think it appears to be but um and then the accumulated sequence of them is in itself quite profound as well yeah i thought it was um as you say i i i live by your i live by that statement ian about not over explaining yeah <laughs> so i very much yeah. agree with you there and i i think it's true if you can be eloquent with your idea it's a wonderful thing, so I thought it was great. Thanks very much. I think there's something very poignant about, you know, us all being in our homes, you know, some of us imagining the time when we could escape somewhere and, and, and you know, seeing all those images, you know, it, it, it felt sort of... Um, that it could only happen at, at that time, you know, and, and that was the power of it as well, Ian, you know, yeah. Yeah, no, I, it sort of, it certainly felt right when I was doing it. There, there was no point when I sort of was thinking, have I, have I actually 
you know, is, is this working or not? And like once once you're on that thing, especially especially when you have the the, the kind of um, the sword hanging over you of well, you have to get this project finished because actually you won't get the grant money, which you know, okay, it's not that shouldn't be the reason why art is made, but it's like it's like I'm, I'm, you're entering a contract, you know, and, and, and to me. If I enter a contract, I, I want to complete it, and I sort of felt that it was good. But usually, if if a project goes on for a good while, I, I kind of you tend to interrogate it again and again and think, well, actually, is this as sound as I thought it was going to be, or is it whatever? And and that's why, to me, in some ways, the paintings weren't precious. I mean, they, I think, I think, I think all these these images that you get on the internet, they, 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 they there is a quality, and I love that the, the, the dialogue that gets set up between you know traditional or conceived as co traditional medium of oil on canvas and the idea that you're you're actually sort of it, it's having a, its own conversation with digital imagery mm -hmm. that there's a lovely kind of um give and take that goes in that and somehow it it somehow elevates what we think of as junk throwaway kind of thumbnail images you know i have this idea of like it, it, they're up there all around us like digital soup they've lost their original stories they're just kind of floating and we think of them like sweet wrappers it's like somebody's just throwing them away but then if you if you take the time to remake something like that then people think oh actually i'm going to look at this a bit harder because obviously there's something in it because otherwise why would you have spent time making it so there's a sort of a um yeah, there's a lovely tension that goes in with that, and this idea of reappraising stuff that we think of as as, as flotsam and jetsam. So, yeah, this, I'm not sure where we started from that, but that's where I came to. Sorry, I, <laughs> I, think, I, I, went I, off, I think I went off on a solo run there. <laughs> I had a little comment in the chat line about, um, you know, you started with the uh, the Italian word quaranta, meaning forty, mm. and I'm not sure if you if you know that the Quaresima, which is the day the the Italian word for Lent is forty days, which and, is that's, course, yeah. and that's and um, that's a time for introspection and you know uh, and and, making, so, and sacrifice as well, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it's, it's that yeah. idea, which is which is very interesting. It's sort of that that one hadn't come on my radar, but it's it's so funny when I look, when I looked at this idea of forty. I mean, I I knew about the quarantine thing. But if you look back through history, thousands of years ago, um, it's always forty. Mm. You know, uh, in the Bible, it's forty days and forty nights. It's mm. there's always it, somehow it's it's a magical number. I, I almost get the feeling that it's it was a sort of a, a unit. It was like a month. Mm. You know, maybe, maybe they didn't figure that there were twelve months, but that mm. there were sort of forty days was like mm. a tenth of a year, or a you know see you know something um so because all these different cultures it, it comes up every time and you sort of mm. think gosh this is 40 again you know what's what's mm. all this mm. um so yeah no that that, that one yeah. actually that one passed me but i shall i shall investigate a little further and you know, amend, goes, amend my goes, website <laughs> Add that in as it, another. Goes, it goes into a spiritual realm doesn't it rather it's than simply sort of, being on a physical yeah. quarantine you've got to do which you've got to separate yourself That's you do right. have to separate yourself but to not take every sunrise for granted mm. Mm. and I, I love that idea that as i was following it round, you know that you don't know what the weather's going to be in different countries and on which coast or in the middle or so it was it was very very kind of hit and miss and i ended up i, I ended up with about 70 or 80 in all over the course of the 24 hours and then I, I just looked on the map and I thought, I'm, I'm not going to choose the nice ones or the whatever. I'm going to choose the ones that are as disparate as, or as you know, as, as covers as much of the map as possible. That was, that was very important to me. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want 15 lovely ones and sort mm. of, you know, um, in some places it was very hard to find them. I mean, weirdly, Russia is, is not a place that has a lot of webcams that you can access for instance. Perhaps it doesn't um, have sunrises. But maybe it was doesn't. There, maybe. <laughs> was there one that was from Iceland? Yes. There's, I thought, you know, it was it the know? one with the road? A road yeah, going it, like it this? It is that one, actually, yeah. Okay, I know, because I was there. 
Are you serious? Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell. I recognized it. I was like, that has to be Iceland. <laughs> I have a Canadian one as well from Hinton in Canada. That's, it's, it's one of these, that it looks completely apocalyptic. It's just a little streak of red in between the sort of the, <laughs> between two mountains. It's a, it's a, what, what was the one with the buildings? Um, well, uh, that was um, Detroit, I think. Okay. I, if, you, if you actually go onto my website, um, it's, it's, it's up there and, and each one is, is labelled and numbered. Yes. They're, pre they're presented in the video um, it, alphabetically, right. uh, simply because it, I, it, I wasn't trying to do this idea of following the sun. You know, and then you know, you start up at the, in the north or the south or whatever, or as you go along. And I thought, well, rather than doing that, I didn't want a hierarchy because it was, it was the concept that was that was in in primacy, if you like, um, and and kind of to, to try and tell more of a story is is almost like it becomes a geography lesson then or something. And it's like, oh, look, you know how how India's weather is different from wherever. So. I, I, I kind of, uh, yeah, I was, I was very, I was very sort of um, rigorous in that once I decided how I was going to choose things and the method, that it was just then going to be about getting as, as, as diverse a sort of spread as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you very, very much, Ian. Um, I absolutely love um, One Day 40 Sunrises. I think I think it's resonated with the other artists on on the panel this evening, um, in terms of its uh, just its you know um, um, wide range of ideas and its uh, vocabulary. Um, Thank you. So, um, Thank you next much. artist is Rachel and. Rachel McManus, and we are going to uh, watch Nightcrawl. Um, the, the 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 film was the, the film was actually it was actually filmed by Paul Corey, Rachel, right? Yeah, yeah. who is a fantastic um, you know filmmaker videographer over in uh, County Clare. Yeah, he, um, the neck of the I, made, woods. Yeah. I made the performance in 2019, pre-COVID, which is significant yeah. Yeah. Um, now. Yeah. And being the impoverished artist, uh, Paul said he'd film it for me if he could make a film out of it. So he made the film. It was my performance and he made the film. So um, it's not my film, it's his film, you know. Um, and he so the editing and the he, he but I, I also filmed it from a head cam so there are some interspersed moments of my view of the scene in the in the film also yep and it explores you know i mean obviously explores like a lot of um themes and maybe you can talk about that afterwards um so it, but for me it definitely you know is about distance and i think i think you'll probably agree by watching it so um shall we watch the film okay let's uh find... well, i just warn you it's nine minutes yep. long so if you need to get up and do some stretches or you know <laughs> <that's a great> situation <laughs> it's the personal trainer <laughs> well the okay. performance is um, half an hour but the movie's nine minutes <laughs> Let's, uh, let's roll night crawl.
Wow. <laughs> that that did not seem like nine minutes. That was so so immersive, uh, engaging, incredible. Who was your follower? That's amazing. There was a few, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You got to it was so very, many things to say about this. I just felt so many points of your vulnerability there and just the, yeah. I've never yeah. been there to Ireland or where you were location wise. Sorry to just jump in. You should be talking, but this is overwhelming experience actually to see this film. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I think it's, um, um, I, I want, uh, yeah, I, it's weird to see it again. Um, I have a, I have a, if, if I want to make something and it's not too dangerous, I try and do it because I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I, I get consumed by an idea and I want to try and make it happen. So this was exactly what happened with this. And I think the interesting thing about that film is it could be a, it could be a, Three ties on, on on drinking in small Irish towns. You know that's what it could really be about because it that's <laughs> everyone in that film except for me and the photographer was drinking. You know, and I, I did the, I made the I made the performance at a quarter to twelve on a Saturday night to see what would happen when night became morning. Um, it took half an hour. I finished it just just after. A quarter past it took half an hour and it was only a half a mile it was up one street and down another and uh i think what i like most about it now is the is the sound of oh, that's just all people screaming and shouting and it's just extraordinary i just think you <laughs> i just think the sounds are amazing the, the squawking and the screaming and the drunkenness and the shouting that's just all like, normal, you know. Well, and that was happening real time, like the actual time base for the video footage itself. That yeah. was my other question: was that an overlay, or that was no. the uh, the no, real no. time? No, I had fascinating. I had, I had someone filming it, and then I had a head cam to kind of take back control and have have my own film version. And the the interesting that you say about the vulnerability of Heidi, but like I did that knowing full well what kind of audience would be there so in an essence you could say I was using them you know because yeah. I was very much aware of what sort of people would be out and what level of inebriation there was likely to be so I was kind of <laughs> using them if you know rather than the other way around because I, I, I knew very well that um, there'd be a lot of drunk people I didn't think there'd be that many but <laughs> there was a lot and it was quite surreal because the guards, which is the Irish police, showed up and gave me this, this escort up and down the street, which in essence I was quite glad of because I got a few kicks and slaps, so I think I could have, would have gotten a lot more if they hadn't been there. So, Well, and they didn't try to stop you, which is great, or so, insist that you have some kind of license for your performance. Well, I, or, I had emailed them in Canada. telling them I was doing it, but they didn't answer. So I thought, mm -hmm. okay, they haven't said I can't do it, so I just went ahead, and then they just showed up. <laughs> okay, yes. Maybe they maybe they didn't know. Maybe they just he's this crazy person, so they just decided to to um follow along. But um yeah, so it, I learned more from that performance um about human behavior than I had reckoned on learning, yeah. So it was an interesting Rachel, story. could you could you say something about what you wore? Oh, I usually wear red if I'm doing a public performance, Annie. Okay. It's a power thing for me, and it's uh, it gives me gives me strength, yeah. and uh, makes me feel strong. It's pretty simple. I just uh, okay. wear red as a as a as a as a color to, um, summon up some. I was a bit nervous, and I I wore red to kind of give myself some, some oomph, and yeah. I kind of have done that ever since. And also, uh, visually, it looks strong because you're yeah. just using really yeah. really the effect and. Uh, so well, yeah. I was seeing it as orange. Oh, were you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, which brought up a lot of stuff about oh, yeah. prisoners and things. So, and but also you had a mask on, didn't you? Yeah, I had on a mask to um so I could keep my head cam on 
And also, okay. I didn't want to be too gendered. Um, yes. I, I wanted to try to not be too gendered in the piece. I, yes. I, I, mean, I, I don't like... It's, I don't like to be too gendered when I'm making performance and by which I mean I don't laugh, I don't want that to be at the forefront and I felt like if I was crawling along being very female looking it might enhance the vulnerability aspect which I wasn't well, I wasn't wanting to do too mm -hmm. much yes so yeah yeah and sorry I, <clears throat> sorry I was muted um uh, what guided your editing process? What sort of ideas um, determined what you edited out and in? Well, I didn't edit the film, you see. Paul did. And uh, he, um, I mean, the, 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 the experience of doing the performance was people, um, it was also interesting how men and women reacted. So the, a lot of men stood in my way, I think probably for fun, or I got a few slight mm -hmm. kicks and a couple of slaps and that was all men. Women screamed and squawked around me, but didn't actually touch me. So that was interesting. And he, wow. Paul, Paul edited it in such a way as he showed some of the interactions that I had with people, but not all of them. And mm -hmm. um, I think he wanted to try to give, a, give an essence of the fact that there were quieter moments and then there were louder moments and there was more it more abrasive moments and more funny moments so i think he wanted to show kind of a spectrum of the different um encounters that i had in just two streets crawling along you know do you think you would have had more followers if you'd gone on or is that not where it finished oh no it finished just after he finished filming and I did have some input into the editing because I didn't want I I would have not put any music in and I would have um not have but I, he he I would have he just put in some sounds and he um finished it the way I had asked him to just a blank just to stop I just wanted it to end without any um because it was I kind of just what what I found really interesting was I got to stand up at the end um, take off this balaclava and head cam and just become me again um, and that was the end of it it was it was very underwhelming um, and you know I was interested in the fact that I was able to just stop the performance get up and not be vulnerable anymore um, you know and I, I brought up so much about homelessness and vulnerability and um, yeah. so much stuff and I came away from it aware of my privileged middle class status that I could just hop up and walk away again and oh, I'm brand now, you know, and uh, also I also the reason why I crawled was because crawling is such a um, uh, it, it, It's a very loaded movement. It, it can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. I don't even need to go into all those ways, but um, um, it can be, you know, there's so many ways that you can interpret that and a lot of people interpreted it in, 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 a different, in a different way as I went along and I was interested to see how it would be interpreted by anyone who chose to respond and um, like one of the reasons why I did it as well was because I do all my work by myself mostly and it's, um, it's a way to interact. It's a bit of an extreme way to interact but it's a way to interact because mm. um, I, I mostly work by myself and um also i have a child who crawls to get from a to b because she has a disability and it was a kind of an homage to her as well slightly mm. as well so i really um you know it's, it's kind of like what ian said i i don't always feel the need to you know explain what i do and i had a couple of people walking along with me during the performance and they were saying to me, well, what do you want us to tell people that you're doing? And I perhaps unhelpfully said, just tell them whatever you want, you know, which I probably could have been more helpful, but <laughs> I was too busy trying to- Right, you know, who said that? The pavement. Sorry? Who said that to you? Oh, the people who, I had a couple of, I suppose you could call them facilitators who were walking along with me just for safety. Yeah. Yeah. From just afar, a little yeah. bit further away, not, not yeah. up close. And they had said, look, if people ask us, what, what, yeah. what do you want us to tell them you're doing? Mm. And uh, it didn't really matter because it was, it was, it was midnight on, in, in, in a small town in, with a lot of pubs open at the time. So it wasn't the time to go into a detailed, you know, um, 
conceptual breakdown of performance art, you know. It, it, so I, I'm not sure if they what they said, um, but I just I just I, I kind of wanted to leave it up to people to make of it what they would, you know. Mm. So. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting to think too, Rachel. You know, just crawling at different times in different places, right? So you were in the midst of the pub scene, you know, midnight, uh, lots of sort of raucous behavior going on. And I just automatically thought to myself, well, what about, you know, high noon in the, in the business district at High Street or something like that? What would happen then? The vulnerability actually would change. It would not go away. It could become even more because there would be more people on the streets. And um, yeah. not necessarily as open, like, even though people were ignorant and, you know, their behavior was bad, they also, because of their drunkenness or their inebriation, had a bit of openness and a bit of play. Like, what is this crazy person doing on the street? Or what is this, you know, is this person actually one of us, one of the drinkers? Or is this something else going on? Whereas if you were in the high street at, at high noon, uh, there might not, there might be actually more sort of kicking and tripping and, you know, that type yes. of thing too. Who knows, right? Oh, I don't think I would have gotten away with doing it, it uh, during the day, Heidi. Not a hope. Yeah. Especially yeah. not in, 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 in that little town, Ennis, because the, the ladies with their shopping bags would push you out of the way. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, right. you wouldn't be tolerated in a, a daytime space. So I, I, yeah. I very much took advantage of the, slightly loose at night time yeah. anything goes thing to yeah yeah what can happen Rachel next? a couple of a uh, couple of questions for you uh, yeah. Aha Collective Honey have you heard of Miranda Wall familiar with the work of Miranda Wall are you asking me Alan or Aha Collective yeah yes yeah, yeah sorry Rachel yeah I'm asking you yeah uh, no I'm not no oh you might be interested in her work Rachel it's just um she, she, I don't know when you did that piece. Do you, could, do you know the date? It was October um, 2019. Um, oh, okay. All right. It, it was just, um, uh, she was involved in um, a piece where she was crawling in Wales in Aberystwyth. Oh, yeah. With a tree on her back. So the tree was in a pot and it was on her back. And um, she had cameras all over her body. And, um, uh, she had some vitriol. It was in the newspaper, and she had people complain about her. It was it was a massive hoo ha in, in Aberystwyth, <laughs> and it was really hilarious. But um, you might be interested in just seeing that piece. It's, it's very different, but well, you I'd know, I might get you to put it in the chat box for me. I'd love to see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, uh, can I just throw in something? Sure. Yep. I, I just I, I think it's a, I think it's a terrific piece of work. I think it's unsettling. I think it is immersive. I, I love the fact that somehow because of your position, let alone what you're wearing, you become very much the individual in a kind of a continuum. And I particularly love the fact the thing ends without a ta-da. Mm -hmm. it, it's it feels like it's still going on. It mm -hmm. feels like it's completely continuous. It's, it's almost like one of those mythical things, like Sisyphus pushing push the rock up the hill or something. Yeah, it's got yeah. that kind of monumental quality. I absolutely adore it. Oh, thank you. I'm also obsessed with Sisyphus, interestingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I, I just put a link in the chat to Rachel, just with reference to that. I was trying to find that artist, but I came upon this other one, performance artist William Pope L. Uh, in 1991, crawls around the perimeter of Tompkins Square Park in New York, in which he wore a business suit while dragging his body along the ground using his elbows and knees. Uh, yeah. He's a black artist and he's got a, a potted plant in his front hand. So anyway, check it out. It looks yeah, really... Wonderful. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen yeah. this one. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that, you know, just to echo what Ian said, I think that, you know, I mean, it is, it's quite it was disconcerting. Um, you're placed in the role of the foyer of mm -hmm. uh, watching mm -hmm. yeah and you know but do you feel like a helplessness if something was going to happen and yeah. um, so there's a there's this incredible tension there because it is yeah. like it's almost like a, a experiment um in terms of you don't know what's going to happen the volatility reactions of of people you know and it's like you know also you down at that that level and um and it's all about, you know, power, you know, 
um, you know, crawling along the ground and it makes you think about that and, you know, people can be walking along and um, and anything could have happened really. It was, I think the, the, you know, the tension is just nail biting. Um, but, mm-hmm. but I think for me, it was just like, you know, I'm placed in this role of voyeur and I feel, I, I felt quite um, helpless. Um, you know, what I, what I could, um, what I could do and I, you just, you know, have to resign your fate that you have to just watch this. <laughs> you, know? Um, <laughs> you know, you can't do anything. It's like, you just have to, you know, sit and, be you know still and and watch and um I think I think the you know the, the the tension is just incredible because it's like you know we see all we see images like this all the time in video games computer games and online games and everything and you know and there's this detachment I feel now you know like people it's almost like you know this is a you know a character that you're controlling or make them walk mm. along the street on all fours and oh, there's people there, you know, what's going to happen, you know, but it's like a live human, you know, and it's a, it's a real situation. Um, it's like, you know, there's no, um, it's, you, you kind of think about, you know, that's the difference between, um, you know, like acting and performance art, you know, the, um, this is, this is like, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a real fluid, um, you know, thing. It has a start, it has an end point. And within that is the performance. Um, and there's a, there was a there was a, a quick question from uh, Lacuna Festivals. Um, Rachel, how how did the people around you react when you stopped? Um, that? That's a good question. Um, I think the there was a very there was a slightly theatrical element to the whole atmosphere. Anyway, due to the basic basic sort of communal drinking that was going on so you know you could see people going what is what is, what is going on what, what's that what's that person doing and then they sort of almost instantaneously move on to whatever they were doing because they were you know they'd had a few pints or maybe more than a few so it didn't take long for the whole thing to just be like it never happened you know because mm-hmm. i was in i was after midnight on on a on a, on a, on a busy night with no rain in, in, in a small town in Ireland, you can be, you know, before the pandemic, you can be guaranteed of certain behaviors at that time. And so it was like, it never happened very quickly. People just, just, you know, got on with, as I said, as soon as I got up and, and stopped, um, I became invisible again. Anyway, I was no longer this, I was no longer putting myself in a, in a public space and, um, it just ended really quickly. And, you know, um, I did see some, I, 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 yeah, it was, I didn't see any, um, you know, the way now everyone records everything and, and, and Instagrams it and whatever. I didn't see any of that of the piece because I didn't, nobody knew who I was, which was a good thing. So I didn't see, I, I'm sure people were going, there was this weird one on the street last night crawling along, or maybe she wasn't, maybe I just drank too much. You know, I was hoping there'd be an element of, did that happen or did it not? You know, so I was very happy when the whole thing just kind of was gone and finished and was like almost like a dream, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was an underwhelming finish, which was what I wanted. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you finished safely because I had a, you know, I actually was expecting some bloke to kind of jump on and try and pretend he was riding a donkey or something, you know. Yeah, I was uh, worried. I was worried that you know? something like that might happen. Yeah, went yeah. through a lot of emotions in a yeah, very short he, amount of time. He actually he didn't leave afterwards. He he kept trying to um keep his he kept, he didn't want to go home. Let's just put it that way. He <laughs> actually <didn't wait. laughs> oh dear. I think yeah, I think I think um, it reminds me somewhat of a, a work by an artist called Francis Allies. Um, he made a film called When Faith Moves Mountains. Um, it's worth checking out. Um, it's like all these um, it's like the idea of you know faith can move move mountains and it's just all these guys and they're actually like moving a massive big pile of sand from one place to another in a bit of desert and um, to me I think there's a a really obviously strong you know tradition um, history of faith you know in Ireland Um, you know people you know doing spiritual journeys up to the, the top of 
some of the mountains and their bare feet and stuff. So I think there's like an element of suffering and um, suffrage there for, um, you know, for your faith, whatever your faith is. And I think, you know, in in this circumstance of the performance, you know, the you know the faith must surely have been art, you know. Um, but I'm just wondering if you know there's you know the location, you know the the site specific location, whether you know people were thinking, you know, they're used to faith and they're used to people, you know, performing acts of suffrage in terms of. Uh, it would be interesting, you know, like um, like we're talking about if it was performed elsewhere, just to see what kind of you know other countries in London or something. You know whether you know what people the the reckon is. Um, but I, I, I think to me it's it's interesting because it you know I mean it's obviously people I think have a strong sense of faith. Um, you know it's just like trying to gauge you know what you know because some people some of the girls were trying to mimic what you were doing, not other guys were trying to um, disrupt what you were doing. The guys were trying to disrupt. So it's like, you know, this idea of, you know, you kind of like seeing their perspective and mm. how they're thinking about it, their reactions mm. um, in terms of, you know, what you were doing. And, you know, it's, uh, it's also this idea of, you know, if you had faith, an act, if you were doing an act of faith, you know, they were like, you know, being, a, you know, somewhat disrespectful, you know, to that faith. You know? So okay, I definitely I thought about, about, yeah. Sorry, I have Sorry, a question I'm, just about what you're saying too, Alan, like, you know, Rachel, you know, you noted that you were trying to sort of minimize your presence as a gender, but, um, you know, it was, I think it's obvious that, you know, you're, you weren't a man or, um, you know, anyone else that other than you. And it begs the question, you know, if, if what you observed was from males mostly on the street with that kind of behavior towards you and women being more sort of scattered around you as opposed to, um, intersecting you know would that have been different of course it's just a would have but would that be different if it was alan crawling on the street so what would men's uh, reaction and women's reaction be to you know an alan or an ian crawling on the street as opposed to rachel or or one of us so mm -hmm. it, there's yeah, maybe another part that question. needs to be told you know yeah, so very much so that's a good question mm. maybe we'll i'll have to get um the last to come over <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll come over if there's a fight to get us and check out, and check out if it's the full moon or not see where the moon's at at that point too you know yeah exactly yeah. That, that could um, influence things somewhat yeah. <laughs> so now if you get a guard escort like I did though that's so <laughs> <laughs> yes no kidding well I mean I'll be perfectly honest with you I think in a previous life you know I, I did sort of crawl along the streets trying to head for the kebab shop but um, <laughs> not anymore not for a long time not for many years <laughs> um, but yeah I think that's the you know I mean I, I, you know, I mean like probably everyone here we've all probably watched like a lot of videos and performances and artworks and um, personally you know it's you know Rachel's work is it's kind of up there with one of my top favorites mm. thank you definitely brilliant well done. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward to I'll, I'll, I'll just, um, I, I, I've kind of saw tacit snippets of uh, Rachel's most recent work, which is um, involved getting up about 4 a.m., being down at the, the seafront and tracking the tide coming in um, to the whole duration of it. When about uh, just after 10 15 a.m., when it was at full tide. And um, I think Paul did the cinematography again for it. So really looking forward to yeah. when that gets uh, premiered. Yeah, somewhere. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think that the the format of the evening, um, I think both because, you know, uh, we have indulged in the works that are actually in the show. Um, but I think, you know, there's quite a lot of the, the, the discussion stuff that, you know, um, actually had um, actually had uh, noted in terms of um, things here. I think you know we've, we've kind of like discussed a lot a lot of this. You know, we could, to be honest, you know, we could do like a whole other 
event, you know, to just dis discuss a lot of this, this stuff here because it, it was quite, you know, a long, a long time frame, frame, you know, 16 months. And I think it's been absolutely fascinating and fantastic actually taking the time, you know, to talk about the artworks. And uh, uh, personally, I've got a, a lot out of it. I've, I feel really enriched. Uh, I feel infused. I feel connected now. You know, we've all been through the same thing and um, it's inspiring. Um, and it's, it's 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 good to meet everyone, and uh, so I think that you know it's it's uh, probably time to draw the the event to a close. Um, uh, so I would just like to say that thank you um, for everyone their attendance this evening, and thank you again to Lacuna Festivals um, for making the event possible, um, and the. If, if, if anyone wants to stay in touch, you know, I think we have um, um, websites and you know, um, we'll all e email addresses and hopefully, hopefully we can uh, come again uh, in the future, um, you know, for some some kind of discussion, some more discussion. Um, so, if anyone else wants to has any concluding remarks, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, over we. Uh, wrap up the, the event well alan I, th I i thank you for facilitating everything but I, I was thinking it'd be great to to discuss some of those other questions yeah, yeah. we can't yeah we can't we can't do it just now i'm just conscious of uh if anyone has Sorry. has to leave um, oh, yeah, time -wise. Yeah, yeah, um maybe on another occasion or something yeah certainly yeah um definitely um well, how, um, and my question is, how do we keep the collaboration going? Because I think this is really timely. You know, um, it's been wonderful meeting artists, and I and I've loved attending these events. Uh, and the next couple of weeks for the rest of the festival, I'm definitely going to have more time to attend the online things. But um, thank you so much. This has been really, really wonderful. Thank you all. Yes, for, thank you very much. And uh, yeah. for taking part. It's been absolutely fascinating to, because obviously we had seen all of the artworks before, but seeing them and then hearing your um, comments and the interactions between, um, between you all has been absolutely fascinating. I've had a really lovely evening and we hope you have too. Um, and yes. absolutely, if you want to have another um, evening chatting about the the questions and, you know, whoever's up for doing that, then, yeah, Alan, if you coordinate it, we'll set it up. It's, it's not a bother. Yeah, I think, I think um, I'll definitely have to do that one with a glass of wine uh, next time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. A glass of wine or two. Uh, that would be good. Make it, you know, less formal and... Um, you know, we can, uh, you know, unpack a lot of the issues because the, the, the definitely like, you know, we can learn definitely from the, 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 the part, the second part of, of the, of the event in terms of, you know, trying to unpack and discuss, you know, the, all the, the things, the technology emerging and the education, you know, the re response, you know, the way things are going and but there's definitely a lot, it was maybe um, I think it's been good to spend time with the artwork, actually just watching the films and appreciating it and discussing it. Um, and hopefully, yeah, definitely, if everyone is up, we can try and get everyone together again. We can then yeah. do it as a part two. Okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll be lovely. I've really, Love it. really enjoyed this yeah. evening. So. Um, another opportunity that there is for you to talk about these um, things is at the digital dinner, which is towards the end of the festival but yeah. that last year that was lovely it was really informal people kind of came and went as they could because obviously not everyone can arrive at the same time and there was lots yeah. of really lovely kind of really fruitful conversations um and yeah a lot less formal yeah. so it's just got a totally different have, yeah do we have to eat something digital for dinner or is it <laughs> yeah, that's the plan is it just Peaceful. Some, uh, yeah, just, just, just a couple of bites, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Literally B Y T E S bites. Okay, so bite thank size. you, 
thank you, Alan, for, for hosting. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Simon. Um, and we look forward to round two. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Thanks, right. a Thanks a million. Thanks a million, guys. Thank you. Really good. Bye. Bye.